Hello, if you're watching this, Hello. Um, that means that you have found the secret gateway to series yes. three of World of Wigan, episode one. Hello. Yeah, that's right. Uh, last October, you may remember that we ran a competition mm. for some budding editors to uh, put together an intro sequence for our new episode. Now, the response was, to say the least, underwhelming, but we did manage to group two together, so uh, they automatically win first and second place. Now, remember... This was strictly for under 16, so hopefully they got no help from the parents, Jamie. So in second place, um, an entry from Dave B. 1983 at bluyonder.net. And uh, here, here it is. So, uh, clearly that wasn't relevant, but we didn't say that in the terms and conditions, so uh, obviously that's our fault, I guess. Uh, if you could make it more relevant to the show in future. Uh, yeah. uh, but anyway, well done to, B, uh, to Dave B, and you've won some prizes on screen now. Uh, but uh, in first place, and I believe this is more relevant, is Lucy. That's all she's put, and uh, she's won some better prizes, again, on screen. And, uh, well, all we can say is, enjoy the rest of the episode. Yeah. Here's the intro. Well done, Lucy. Roll VT. Um, excuse me, do you know the way to World of Wigan? Yeah, what you want to do is take a left and go deep into your mind. Turn off your senses, belie your beliefs. Be tickled and transformed by rosy idols, peerless performers, angry hammers. Watch out for the angry hammers. Candorel suppers, comedy nudges, the ice cream man say yeah! And all of the idents you can fit into a sock. Go beyond the wonderful whirlpool of wisdom. Is that left or right at the whirlpool? It's opposite Greg's. Hello and welcome to Wigan News. The uh, Wigan News show all about mainly for King. Shipping a banana off his rectum. Don't be ridiculous. I mean, come on, does this really seem plausible? Calm down, please. Just leave me alone. It's scary. It's bastard and scary. But we need to stop the mole panic here. I know for a fact that Bono is a virgin. Let's go to the chase. I would like to talk about trains. Trains. Lock up your granddaughter. This is gonna be a real Philly of a series. And they ain't holding up my britches. Damon Hill has punched an old woman. What's he done that for? We'll have correspondents with their ears on tracks waiting to pounce on the News Express. It is that serious. That's right. We're bringing the freshest news stories from Wigan, every now and then on the world's biggest video platform. But don't take my word for it, ask this guy. Samuel, Daniel, Luke, they're all watching World of Wigan. Hey, I held a garage sale to fund this series, so you better watch too. Reading gives you AIDS. And we'll be broadcasting to millions worldwide, from the West, to the Middle East. 
فباكستان لا تعطينا أي أموال لقاء هذا العمل نحن نقاتل لوجه الله حتى لبطاقة شحن الهواتف الذي نطلقه الفقيدان هما وحيد الله وإحسان الله أسأل الله أن يتقبل شهادتهما لقد قتلنا منهم عددا هناك أيضا ألحقنا بهم خسائر كبيرة هيا فلنأخذ المدفع الرشاش And in an unlikely act of charity, the terrorists agreed to release Wigan hostage Stephen Shaw back home in time to watch the new series. Part of the pact, however, meant that Stephen had to put up an ISIS placard at his workplace Mecca Bingo. Also, we have two brand new presenters. Sadly, we had to let go of Jamie and Martin, but we brought in two of our best reporters from the cold. Rogue investigator Hayes Finch and Jesus denier Blue Peter. You wouldn't want to miss that. I hate it when they just put the black ball over the pocket. Why, why do directors do that? It's time in a... Every time. Well, it only takes a few takes, doesn't it? Just to put a decent shot in. Yeah. Just makes it more plausible. Plausible. Hello and welcome to World of Wigan, the new show all about news in Wigan. This is Blue Peter. Yes, I am. Now on today's show we have. Did I rehearse that? Sorry. Nothing. Now uh, you may have noticed that we've just had one a bit of a... Uh, second. I've just got to read this. What? Right. Okay. For you out there at home, if you're on the M6 today, then everything is fine. Well, that's it. Yeah. No delays or. I'm just reading the card. As I was saying, we've had a bit of an upgrade in the studio, haven't we? Yes, we've had a bit of a budget boost to make sure that this episode is even more tastier and juicier than the last. Uh, yes, and it's all thanks to our new sponsor, Lowton Tinned Chub, uh, the tastiest carp in all of Lowton and surrounding areas. Sorry, what's that? Tin Chub. What? Our, our sponsor. I didn't know. We've spoken at length about this. No. Nope. It's been in all the meetings. Oh, look. We have to endorse it three times in the show between us. I'm not doing that. So, well, you are. Well, because I'm not. It was signed in the contract. Well, I so refuse. I'm not doing well, any advertising. I'll do two. Well, that'll be interesting. Yes, it will. Well, now it's time for the headlines. Standish teenager talks candidly about his time with Richard Gere. It was an interesting experience. Lee man just can't stop running. I can't stop running! Help! Can a ruler and a pencil increase your chances of conceiving? Look, I don't know what you're talking about, just leave me alone. And Norley Hall woman lambasts members of the public. You biscuits! You, you pie fucker is fiery! You, you, you bin bug! If you like things, you'll love World of Wigan. It touches the soul. It touches the cloth of existence. It can even caress your gentle leg. Leg! World! Of! Wigan! Wigan. Watch, Watch it. Name? Jerry. Jerry Tin. Occupation. A clean. What could you have been? I could have been a footballer. Reason why you didn't. Um, well, I have a condition called uh, dyspraxia and that affects my uh, coordination and my spatial awareness and that would have made it uh, more difficult to get to a, a pro level. Also as well, didn't really do much training, you know, didn't get involved in the um, youth league or get signed up to any uh, training academies by any of the pro clubs. So, uh, so yeah, it never, never really happened really. Now, may I ask you a question? Of course you can. Do you know how to shower? Uh, yes, yes, I think I do. It's a simple process of wiping and washing, isn't it? Think again. Oh. World of Wigan has uncovered an alarming statistic that almost everyone who thinks they know how to shower don't actually know what they're doing when they step into the void. That's why we asked Mild Turf to investigate. Now, please note that this report will feature Channel 44's Gold Box in a desperate attempt for us to increase our viewing figures. Um, seriously, the last episode only hit 20. Now, we've all heard of showering. That is to have water drop from a device that enables you to have a wash. 
but not many people know the best way to have one. A shower. It's in the oven. Which oven? Our oven. I'm not an idiot. I've come to this small house in Wigan to find out the best way to have one and hopefully learn a few new things along the way. Let's go inside. It's not there anyway. Look at that, there's another chip here. Got food in your mouth. The first shower was invented in 20 BC by the Egyptians and was then called Kikon Spazi Wenklemoye, which roughly translated means meaning Sim Sim. Oh, what's this then? God knows. I used to have a sketch of a bunch of unfunny wankers. Aren't all sketchos filled with talentless wankers? <laughs> <laughs> the primitive techniques involved having a slave standing atop a very large cliff and getting them to spit on the showerie. Thanks to distractions like the weather and poor aim, many Egyptian slaves didn't have lips, and so the best you could hope for was a small sprinkle of blood and saliva. A kind of horrible sandstorm, but with blood and spit. Ancient Egyptians believed that there was a curse on showering, as more than 40 people disappeared whilst showering over the course of a century. This belief is still held in wide regard today by dogs. But what came next? I spoke with historian Bell Yacht. As humanity evolved, we were introduced to the next stage in shower development by the Greeks, the invisible wash, which, of course, did nothing. Oh God, this is awful. You can see where every gag is going about an hour before they reveal it. <laughs> Even if you're blind, you'd see the gag. <laughs> Even if you were a fetus, you'd see the gag. <laughs> and a blind one at that. You're not terrible, are you? I think even we would do a better job than these idiots. But of course, it wasn't until the 1970s that showers started to resemble what we know today. With a shower, a shower head, and a place for the water to go, otherwise known as a sinkhole. But of course, there weren't any sinks involved. <laughs> now that we've learnt a little bit more about showering, I think it's high time that I've demonstrated the best way to have one in a normal everyday working shower. First step, of course, is to change into nakedness. Now I'm nude, can I begin my shower? Think again. First off, the shower scene. The shower and turn on the shower. Tell you what, this guy could do the shower, but he stinks. Yeah, a failure. <laughs> that shower's acid on his face. Now it's raining water, I can finally step into the shower after a small prayer and a gentle rubbing. I'm having a shower and it's falling down my head like a vertical bat. And it's coming and it's actually... Help! Help! Mark? Mark, are you there? But they don't even show how to end a sketch sometimes. Yeah, as soon as they run out of ideas, they just cut me sense. Dean, can you come with me for a moment, please? Yeah. Have a seat, please. Right. Dean, you've been with the pack six months. As discussed in our last meeting, there have been some concerns about your performance. Oh, oh, oh okay. On Thursday, at quarter past eight, Three rival hunters were in the den. You were on surveillance at the time. This was not reported. As a result of this, three cubs were killed and another wounded. All four then had to be eaten, and this upset some of our most important stakeholders. Oh, I see, yeah. Dean, we've made the decision to let you go. These issues have been brought up several times, and you've done little to address them. Hey team, only brought you in for a quick update. I'm sorry to tell you that Dean is no longer in the pack. Anyone who was in correspondence with him will now report to myself. On a happier note, Scavenging has found three circles of vultures just six miles from the den. Success breeds success, as I always say, and I think you'll join me on this one. For instance, say... Yep. Uh, okay. right. mm. What if I... Yeah. Oh, uh... Yeah. Wigan Chambers are expected to reduce their annual budget by almost a quarter in the latest round of government cuts. Is this another boot in the mouth from a London-centric state, or are we just a bunch of northern idealists living in a half-baked pie dream? 
I'm joining us now for some old-fashioned chin-ups, our council leader, Tony Collateral, and creative arts deliverer, Pat Trash. Uh, Tony, if I could come to you first. You support the cuts. A uh, bit of a traitor to the North West, aren't you? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, comparatively, we've got it off rather lightly. I mean, uh, in fact, if you consider uh, the chambers in, in Bristol and Plymouth, they've both been asked to cut their budgets by over 40%. Hold on, that's shade so, picking. By way of comparison. You're listening major cities, and if you look at the target, Yep, go on. You listen, major cities, it only takes... Sorry, um, yep. You listen, two exceptions that lay outside. Okay, sorry, no, it's I like think there's a delay. Cities, uh... so... No, carry on. If you did your research, you'll find... If you did your research, you'll find 95% of the cuts. Okay, I think we'll leave Pat for now. Uh, right, let's go to Tony. Off. Tony, um, the government have... Right, I don't know who that is. Okay, right, let's go back to Pat and Hinckley. Uh, Pat, how will the impact be felt in art departments such as... You? Right, that's Hurst Finch. Blue, as usual, it's the poorest who are going to suffer these cuts. And I think that we can expect to see volunteering opportunities diminish for both young and old. Man in Balaclava, any thoughts on this issue? We want our soldiers to be repatriated from English right, jails. sorry, if I could just We've interrupt. Taken... The issue is about cuts to chambers in Wigan. Look, I don't know. We took hostage of your guest, and if you don't meet Look, our demands... have you got an opinion on the cuts, or we'll have to lose you? Last chance. Look, I don't... I don't know. If, if you deprive a man at street level, you cut off art's biggest source of innovation. It's an outright absurdity. Thank you for joining us. Can he miss the blue and green? I know, I'm watching it. Robertson's schooling Selby. A turn up for the books. What are you spending your winnings on, lad? I've just been listening to a Kevin Eldon podcast, and he reckons the best stuff is no longer the preserve of television. In fact, he says the best stuff is now online. Yeah, that's us. He's talking about what we're doing. Yeah, but we're not the only ones. There are others doing good stuff online. Scurrily good. What? No way! Apparently so. Nah, can't be. Well, let's find out, shall we? Yes, <laughs> wins, yes! Danger, excitement, sometimes in the same place. Who are ya? Or should I say, who are we? Who are all of us? Now over to Dean and Jezza for news. Swinton man has world's hottest curry. And there's been a big breakthrough in Swinton's scientific community today as experts have finally proved that Simon Cowell is a massive bell end. Are ghosts real? Do spirits exist? These are the questions that literally trillions of people ask themselves each day as we search for proof of what happens after we die. But are there any ghosts in Wigan? Do the spirits of deadies invade our everyday life on a daily basis? One Wigan couple seems to think so. Cliff Cliff went to find out what the hell was going on. Sponsored by Lotes and Chubb. Knock, knock, knock. Can I come in? If that question was directed to Mr. or Mrs. Annis, then the answer would most likely be no chance. Roy and Thelma Annis have been living in their lovely home for more than five years. In that time, they've been through a lot together. The financial crisis, two dogs, and an infant death. But a smile has always remained etched on their faces. <laughs> that was until six weeks ago, when a mysterious knocking started in their bedroom and Thelma's blouse was torn to shreds. I've been woken up by knocking about a dozen times. Uh, you know, we both work nights, and the first time it happened, we, we thought it might have just been a dream, but then it happened several more times. And it's not just knocking, is it, Phil? It's accompanied by, I don't know, it's like a kind of a, a weird feeling of shame, like. The closest thing I can describe it to is that like you've swallowed half a bus um, and my mouth, it feels proper dry like afterwards, like I've been like falling asleep in bath again. You haven't done that for ages though, have you? No, no, I've not. 
not since you started bathing in the sink anyway. No, I'd rather not talk about that mm. here. I'm getting more and more concerned. I haven't slept for six weeks and I'm starting to bleed from the armpits too. The moist train set's been demolished. Whatever it is, it hates trains. It actually smeared some substance over the face of a model train passenger. I'd rather not talk about the train set, do you? Why? I don't know, it's just a bit embarrassing. Can we just focus on knocking mm. instead? Yes. All right, well, I've had conversations with the knocking. 50 knocks for yes, 3 for no. 89 knocks means the ghost is tired, and 45 is when it's watching some form of darts. Mm. And the doors keep closing on you, don't they, Roy? Yeah, they do, but I don't think that's related. The Annises pulled their home's history from the local church, but found that there were no medicals or violent crimes. The only things that had happened were a worm massacre in 1980 and a Viking which had had a shit in the bathroom. Interested, we did some investigating. What could be responsible for the knocking and poltergeist activity? Could he be next door? We asked ghost expert Trevor Sandals. We did suspect that at first, so we went around and found the only thing living there was a cow and a violin. And is this kind of thing unusual in the paranormal? Not really. The knocking symbolises a need or want for contact. Think about it, if you were a ghost, would you want to wander around doing nothing all the time? Or would you like to talk to someone? You know, get into contact. I've been involved in several cases around knocking ghosts, and there's usually always a perfectly natural explanation for it. It could be a workman or a radio that refuses to switch off, or someone playing a trick. Could it be David Bowie? He's currently working on his new album, so I think it's a no. With nothing conclusive gleaned, we decided to investigate this thing ourselves. We went round at night. Okay, we're in the house. The Anises were asleep in the box room. We filled their guts with drugs. They're not going to be waking anytime soon. Hey, hey, I think I hear something. Can you? Can you hear? I can hear something. Hey, hey, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, yeah. Ah! Yeah, yeah, no! Ah! Get it, get it. Ah! Ah! Name. Tiny man. Occupation. Feather duster. What could you have been? Um, okay, so I could have been a major comedy writer for a BBC sitcom. Reason why you didn't. I have no idea about screenwriting. I don't know how to lay out scripts. I'm not actually very funny. I have no sense of drive, ambition. I'm very lazy. Um, I have degrees in nothing. I criticise other people's attempts at comedy. Um, but I have nothing to call my own. I'm a cynic. And it's for those reasons outlined that I'm not a BBC sitcom comedy writer. Now, unless you've been living on the moon, you'll know that this week marks 36 years since the passing of Jean-Paul Sartre. Well, we like to think that we spent half of this show uh, revealing the emptiness, misery and futility of man. And here to add to that existential headache is Wigan's foremost psycho-anal orator, Martha Wainwright. And again, this segment is sponsored by Lowton Chubb. Shameful, gluttonous, puerile, classless, bastards of democracy, the pleasure principle on show in an alley. You can sense their attempts to distance themselves from their archive of errors. Plastics as wasteful and as regular as calories. And when they're sold on, so begins the humiliation of judgment by strangers. Your hopes, your dreams, your taste, your memories on display. Either evaluated or dismissed. Usually dismissed in less than a second and right under your nose, as indifferent to your being as you are to nature. You work so hard to fill that empty space, that empty space in the room by the meter cupboard, and you'll work even harder as that void gets smaller 
and further away as the machine persists and as you dismantle deciduous, recyclable, temporary. I might put a little telephone table next to the meter cupboard. What do you reckon? Who am I? 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 You're a prick. Now, before we introduce the weather, we received a flood of emails from viewers complaining that the map we used in the last series was too small. Uh, they complained that they couldn't pick out certain areas of Wigan. I have to say, I had no problems picking out those areas, but due to the increased funds we now have, we've been able to splash out on some new technology. So, joining us again is Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, Sheffield, uh, I believe you've been a, a little under the weather. This cold going round, I imagine, is it? Oh, there's always a cold going round, isn't there? No, I'm fine. I just swallowed a 5p last night, but it should come out in the wash, as it were. Sheffield, um, I have to mention this. Um, you predicted settled weather last time, though, but of course, gale force winds uh, swept the country. Um, left a few people unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing the tops oh, off. Blowing through their arses. Well, let's hope a gale sweeps some of the death threats from my office. Give me some space to fill in the restriction orders. Anyway, I'm under orders to give you some weather. So throughout the region, we see temperatures as low as minus six. This is perfectly normal for the middle of winter and certainly nothing to worry about if we were in winter. But given it's April, the chances of death are severely high, especially if you live in Garswood. Moving through to tonight, the sun will make a breakthrough at around eight o'clock. However, the earth is expected to rotate, leaving the sun shining somewhere over the Atlantic. Some good news for Tuesday morning, I'll be getting a Vauxhall Nova, but the weather remains dreadful. Rain forecast for another 24 hours, so we'll move on. And it's rain for the rest of Wednesday. That's it from me, here's your summary. By the end of this audio course, you will be a smarter, more decisive kettle, a mindful, self-aware juggernaut, forever steaming forward. You are a force to be reckoned with. If you are ready to unleash that hidden potential, then let us begin. Module 1. Build to first, then the rest will follow. For this module, you will need a quiet indoor space, a full-length mirror and an open heart. If, in a minute or two, you are feeling overwhelmed or emotional, please be assured that this is... Name. Rebecca, Rebecca. Name. Rebecca, Rebecca. Actual name. Rebecca, Rebecca. What could you have been? An astronaut. Reason why you didn't. Didn't have the interest, really. Well, guys, thanks for watching. That really is it. And in the words of John, though, if you're not in the wow, you're not in the know. Goodbye.
You're a prick. 